All right, let's cover chapter four. We've actually talked about a little bit of this stuff already, but we're going to talk about it more in depth, okay? Hope you all don't mind me sitting down there in this one, but at least, especially when I type something, it's a lot easier, so. All right, um, conditions. Uh, we've actually talked about if statements. Y'all remember when we talked about it with the um, pseudocode and all that? Hopefully y'all remember that. Okay. Well, allows us to, you know, do things. With if statements, we replace the condition with whatever we're checking against. So what's a condition evaluate to? Anybody? What does this condition right here evaluate to? True or false. True or false. That's it. Can evaluate to a five. Now, older versions of Java, you could put a condition in there like, you know, price equals two with a single equal sign, which is actually an assignment operator. And Java would take it. Older versions. And it would just say, done, did it, true. So now it won't do that anymore. They fixed it, which is good. All right, but they appear in parentheses, while conditions the same way, okay? They involve normally some type of comparison. Now, you can do other things with them, but comparison operators is what we're normally going to mess with here, okay? All right. Well, all right, first ones, equals two, okay? Two equal signs is equals two. One equal sign is the assignment operator, okay? We got not equals to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Okay? Easy enough. Hopefully everybody remembers that from math. Nothing, the only real difference here is the not equals to and the double equal sign. Okay? All right, so double equal sign. Kind of important. Test free quality of two operands. Okay? Now three equals three. Three equals four. No. So 3 equals 3 is true, 3 equals 4 is false, okay? It's two equal signs. Sometimes when looking at code, it might look like one long one, but it's really two separate ones. All right? Not equals 2, test for inequality, okay? Hopper or pronounces not equals 2, and the rest are all normal. So really this, just those first two are the only ones a little bit different. All right? All right, with if statements, and we've talked about them before, we've actually covered the same exact thing in chapter 2, probably. It was chapter 2. Okay, okay with an if statement, to check for one thing. That's it. All right. Okay, if and else, maybe we'll check for two to thing. You know, two things or more. Or okay, if, else, if. Okay. If, else is like you can do this or that. If, else, if could be checking for multiples. So we're going to see a couple examples of these. All right. Here's our pseudocode. If by itself, you know, we have a condition, then our statements. Now, what's different over here is this stuff. I mean, this stuff right here. This is what's different. Now, you notice the condition is inside of parentheses here. So you need parentheses around it. And you have these braces called, uh, what's his name? Um, not Churchill. Um, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcocks. They're called Hitchcock. That's an easy way to... Hitchcock. Everybody seems to know what a Hitchcock is. <laughs> okay. So it's got Hitchcocks around it. And then some statements in there. You could have one statement. You could have multiple statements. You can actually use an if statement without the braces. Not a good idea. Yeah, not a good idea. Because they only do the one next one line. We're going to see some examples of that. Now with if else... Okay, we do if, then we have an else. So it's either going to, if this evaluates to true, we're going to do the top statement. If this evaluates to false, we're going to do the bottom statement. Okay, easy enough. All right. All right, here's some syntax of it again. Okay, if else this time. So if this statement is true, do this. Else, if this statement is true, do this. You can go on forever. Right? If grade is above a 90, give them an A. Else, if grade is above an 80, give them a B. Else, if grade is above a 70, give them a C. Else, they fail. Easy enough. So I could very easily put multiple options here. Don't need the other ones. Don't even need the else. Okay? All right. It says, write a complete statement that prints or prompts the user to enter a sentence and then prints an error message if the last character is not a period. We're going to do this one. You're going to have to help me. 
get my program up here, and then we're going to write it. All right, so let's look at the requirements again. Let me get rid of this. All right. Write a program that prompts the user uh, to enter a sentence and then prints an error message if the last character is not a period. So here it goes. This is enter a sentence. We put in something. You need to say invalid or whatever. All right, so what type of... Obviously, it's going to be an if statement. We know that. Okay. So let's write an if statement. Since I want to get input, do I need the scanner? We learned about scanner last time. We need the scanner. Is this okay for this name? Let's change it to keyboard this time. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of this other stuff. All right, in case you don't remember, you need to import the java.util.scanner before you can use it. So what type of variable is keyboard? It's a scanner, exactly. And it's going to handle input. All right, try to make it look real pretty here. All right, so now I want to say something on the screen. How do I say something on the screen? Anybody? System.out.println. System I always try to write it like that. So now I got the correct number of parentheses and the semicolon. Then I'll go back and put my stuff inside of it. Now, if I'm going to put a string, normally I'll put two of those. Now, i got the correct number of quotes. Please enter a sentence. Easy enough. Okay. Now, I'm going to get input for a sentence. What type of variable do you think a sentence would be? So, I'm going to store a sentence in something. Would it fit into an integer? String. A string, exactly. Would not fit into an integer. My sentence. Now, I want to get input, so I'm going to use the scanner class. Uh, spell it right. Dot next what? <coughs> what do I think? If I'm getting a whole entire line, what should I use? Next what? Next line. Next line. All right. Now, it's always a good idea when you're doing something to compile it. I com normally compile all the time. I'm going to compile it, see how we're doing so far. Aha, no errors, which is good. Uh, my point about compiling often is if you screw up, it's easier to fix it when you just did something little. If you write the whole entire program, like I was helping a student with a program today in my other class, probably spent an hour and a half trying to fix this problem. Man, there were so many errors. I mean, it's a program that's five pieces to it. There's five separate files that all work together. But man, there was just like at least 20 problems. Because he told me I got this one little problem. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> you got all these other problems that are causing that. So I spent some time, emailed it back to him, said, dude, I'm not done looking at it because it's still not fixed totally. But I fixed a bunch already. You know, and when I fix something for someone, say I you know, say you turn in a program to me and you spelt this wrong. Maybe you spelt it like that. The way I normally do it is I'll go in here and I'll comment it, I'll copy it, comment one out, so you can see what you had originally, then you can see the correct way. I normally do that so you can see how you screwed up. So that makes it easier. All right, but if you compile it frequently, that's a good thing. Now I'm going to run it. Hi there, how are you? All right, did it do what it's supposed to? I mean, it, it did what I told it to at least. It's not totally done yet. Okay, now what do we got to do next? Okay, so the requirement says, write a program that prompts the user to enter a sentence. Did we do that part? We prompt the user to enter a sentence, and we got input for it. And then prints an error message if the last character is not a period. So, we're going to use an if statement. All right? So, I'm going to use an if statement. And I know it needs some parentheses. I know I need some Hitchcocks underneath it there. All right. Now, I'm going to fill it in. So, how can I check if the last character of this is a period? Anybody? Should that be, um, what's that white space, the, um, 
What's the thing my, if I want... My sentence dot car at... Okay, my sentence... My sentence dot length as the position. All right, my sentence dot car at. Now I can get a character. Now for the position is my dot length. Is that correct? There's a slight error there. Anybody see what it is? All right, what is, so if I enter a sentence, there you go, minus one. You need a minus one. Okay, because if I enter, this is the sentence. Hi there. Okay, if that was my sentence and it was that long, just so you could see it. So it would be how many long? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my sentence dot length would return eight. But if I want to get this last character, Remember, a string actually starts at zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the E is seven. The length is eight, but the last character is seven. So that's why, in, so I got car at or care at, okay? But instead of a number, I'm telling it my sentence dot length minus one. So now with that sentence, it would take an eight, subtract one, and we would have seven. All right, let's see if I did anything right. You still have to say if it's equal to. All right. All right, I got a problem here. Oh, what is my problem? Incompatible types. So what, what's the problem with it? Anybody? Other than Mike? <laughs> All right, what is this doing? What is this doing right here? It's checking the character at the last position. You all agree with that? What's the requirement say? And print an error message if the last character, which we got, we know that now, is not a period. Well, we need an else, but how do I get this is not a period? Okay, a couple different ways we can do it. Let's go with that way. Equal, equal. Oh, oh, don't hit enter. You really don't need a space, but that's fine. So, okay, so, and I'm going to go in here and wrong. What will say? Uh, is period and then we'll make the other one say is not now someone said I need an else is that right correct all right is not period something like that I want to show you all something this is kind of cool say uh, I got else here and I want to move it I could delete it and retype it but you can actually highlight it and drag it somewhere. In case you didn't know that, you can highlight it in here and drag it where you want to go. So, all right, it's easy enough. All right. So let's try that. Let's let's do it. Enter a sentence. Hi there. No period. This is not a period. Okay. Let's. Hi there. Question mark. Not a period, okay. Hi there, period. His period. So is it doing what it's supposed to do? It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay. Could I change it? I want to modify this to use the not. What do I need to do now? It's not period of system output So I need to move this not. So there? See how easy that is to do? Now let's try it. Space. This is not a pair because I put a space at the end. So that's correct. But no space. It's pair. Very good. Works great. So did we meet the requirements there? I don't think we output the correct sentence, the saying, but invalid. Your sentence needs a period. All right. All right. So, so far so good. Everybody with it? Good with that? All right. 
says no italics indicates input never hard code include or input as part of your source code okay all right let's move on so far so good all right now we have a logical operator for and okay you guys should have done pseudocode to do that whole temperature thing check in the temperature if it's freezing cold I forgot to give you credit for that by the way okay I need to make sure I give you credit someday <laughs> okay all right, so suppose you want to print OK if the temperature is between 50 and 90. And print not OK otherwise. All right, here's how we do the pseudocode. You remember this? If temp is greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 90. What do you think? Is that acceptable? Yeah. Will work in job. Hmm. All right, uh, uh, let's... let's Okay, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that. Um, how am I going to do that? I'm going to modify my code here. I'm creating a new variable. Uh, last. I got the last character. Let's make sure our program still works the way it was supposed to work. Still works. All I did was I created a variable of type character called last character, and I took all that stuff about caret and all that and put it there. So that way I could just check last character. What I want to do now is I want to check, I want to modify my program to find out if the last character, I want it to be okay if it's a period or a question mark. Actually, no, that won't work on this one. Darn it, won't work for this. Um, okay, and hold on. This period, and let's we'll just say correct. You see where I'm going with this. It's not correct. I want to know if the last character is a period and the first character is a H. Okay. How can I do that? Anybody? So I want to check if the first character is an H. So care at or create a variable for first character. Okay. Create a variable for first character. And what goes inside the care at? I'm checking the first character. What goes in there? Uh, the B is zero, or uh, yeah, caret zero. Zero. That's the first character. So, all right. Now I need to modify this statement here to check and see if the first character is a zero as well. Well, in Java we use and and to do and. Okay, <clears throat> it's that's how you say and. Okay, it's just that's the way it is. So how now I'm going to modify and first. Character exclamation equals uh, equal H, right? uh, an H, yeah. yeah. That work? Well, unless you put in the lowercase H. Then. Well, I'm only I want to check for uppercase. Okay. Let's test it. We we'll talk more about that. I there, so it's got an uppercase H and a period. It's correct. Um, C, yeah. Hmm. Something's wrong. All right. You said not equal H. All right. So let's make it this then. That's something wrong. No, it was, it was right according to how you had it because it said it's correct and it wasn't an H and you didn't have a period. So it was. It, it did what you asked it to do. Okay, hold on. Let's run it again. Make sure I. C. Yeah. No period. No H. Not correct. Okay. Ah. Uh, C. Yeah. With a period. Got a problem. Is that correct? 
No, it, that's weird because it's not an or statement, it's an and statement. You need some parentheses around those, those conditions in order for it to read them correctly. All right, let's try that. So you're saying put one here. Correct? That's where I started. Okay, let's try that. You want to know the bad thing? I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> I don't even see it. Like, where's the problem? Okay, if, okay, let, let's think of this logically here. If last character is not a parent, actually, let's change it to equals. That way I can not have to worry about the whole not thing, okay? And we're going to move this down to here. Okay, I just reversed. Is all I did. Okay. So, if last character is is equal to a period and first character is equal to an H, it's correct or else it's not correct. Correct? Are we okay with me? Let's try it now. Okay, it's not correct. That's correct. Be not correct. Okay. <laughs> So what did I change? I think your knots were getting you. you yeah, got, that oh, not, not, oh, not, oh not this and not that. Right. That's what it was. It was the double. Double negative. Whew. All right. I don't think the parentheses would have helped. Well, obviously it didn't, but, yeah, it was that double negative thing. That's why it's, there's a couple things that are hard to work with. Knots or negatives are tough. And nulls. We're not going to mess with nulls. But programming null, you all know what null is? No value. Unknown. No is not really nothing. It's just unknown. Right, it's unknown, so it's very hard to program for that sometimes. Because sometimes people will put in a space. It's nothing. Well, that's not nothing. That's so it's tough. Let's make sure we still work. Hi there. Correct. Incorrect. Incorrect. Okay, so it works. All right. Let's talk about this and sign for a second, okay? Um, here's what they come up with. If temperature is greater than or equal to 50 and temperature is less than or equal to 90. Notice how this one says if temperature is greater than 50 and less than 90. You're not telling it what the 90 part is. See that? In pseudocode, it's okay. In Java, you need to tell it. If temperature is greater than 50 and... Temperature is less than or equal to 90. You've got to repeat temperature. Okay? It doesn't have a clue what to do otherwise. Okay? So if two are required, and then separate the two with an and. We did that. If both the criteria use the same, you still must include it. All right. Uh, program that size to find a basketball game. Oh, free fries. Okay. But before we do that, let's talk about this for a second. Okay. Let's just go back to my code. All right, this is the and sign. That's how you say and. I'm going to modify it. Just one. It's correct. And correct. So it's working. You all agree? It's still working. Then what the heck? So I removed one and it still works. I don't think the book mentions this. It might, it might not, I'm not sure. Okay, there is the difference, okay? This uses what's called shortcut notation, okay? You can do the same thing with or. With a double and, say I'm using if this and this and this, I'm using multiple ands, okay? The moment it finds a false portion of it, like say, okay, let's just use this one. Say, okay, I do this here, and I type in the sentence, um, um, see a period, okay? Well, let's leave the period off, okay? That's what I type in, see ya, okay? 
We know it's going to be incorrect because it doesn't have an H and it doesn't have a period. Okay. With two of these, what this does is it checks the first one. Okay. First part says if last character equals a period, does it equal a period? No. No. It does not check anything from that point on. It's called shortcut notation. It basically says, you know what? I got an end statement. Both ends must be true. So why bother? So you, is that okay with you? We're good with that. All right. This way checks everything. Okay. So which one's better? I would almost say, well, I guess it depends on the application. Like if you're... Um Let's say somebody has to fill out a questionnaire right. and, or a test. So right. say if you have the and and, you get the first question wrong, it's going to mark everything. Right. Wrong, and it won't tell you which ones are correct. Or right. One thing, you know, depends on what I'm writing. I mean, I always use the double and. It's fine. Because, I mean, we're talking Boolean logic here. It's true or it's not. I mean, there's no gray area. But if I'm writing code, this is going to determine to pull the plug on you. If I'm checking for heart rate and temperature, I want to check both. You know what I mean? I want, so that's my opinion on it. <laughs> Usually I could care less. But I would hate for you to just take my temperature and find out you had a bad thermometer <laughs> and killed me. Right. You know, you know, I, that, you know, but again, Boolean logic, it's not going to make a difference in your program. But if you want to make it check both, remove one. Then it will check both. They both, I mean, the book, I don't even think mentions that. I don't know if anyone's read that part. So it just depends on the, I think it does mention Okay, it might mention it. So, okay. But it's fine. Either way, you're not going to be counted off for it. But it's one of those things, it's got to be a preference thing. How do you want to do it? And if I'm writing something that, you know, again, with Boolean logic, it's, there's no gray area. It's not like it's, okay, it's either a period or it's not. It's not a half a period. So it's not going to matter on this. But I, know, I just, I always think back to that, you know, if, I, you know, if I'm going to pull the plug, if, you know, these two criteria, and maybe you didn't read one of them right. Maybe the sensor wasn't working. Maybe I write a Java program that is checking the temperature and the heart rate, and the temperature... The probe's reading wrong, and it gives the wrong temperature. Oh, the dude's got a zero temperature. Oh, he's dead. Kill him. But really, it was, you, know, you see what I'm saying? That's that's the, so, I don't know. It's just, I always point that out. It's not in the slides. It's probably in the book, though. The book covers some stuff we don't cover in the slides. All right. Let's continue on. So I should put that on the test someday. And that way, if uh, people don't listen to the lecture or read the book, what did you find it in there? I didn't. I, had, I haven't found it. I don't know that it. Okay, it might not be. I can't remember who it is or not. But yeah, I've taught out so many different books. It's it in can, one of them it somewhere. It kind of hints at it, but it doesn't explain it like you did. Okay. Right. It's on page one thirteen, but it, it, it yeah. doesn't really explain it. Okay, so it is on page one thirteen, but you can read it by if you want. But uh, so I should put that on there. That way, if you just read the slides, you're never gonna know. All right, <laughs> let's continue. All right, so we talked about that. Now let's look at this free fries, the, the free fries. And I just, that's hard to say. Slide 13. Now last night I had all you can eat ribs. Oh, so yummy. Man, where? Rib crib every Tuesday night. Rib crib. And the problem is in May, all you can eat ribs every day for the entire month. Where's rib crib? Right around Douglas, like two miles from here. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not good. Now, the problem is it's really good. <laughs> if it's not good, I don't want to taste it. Oh, it's really good. And I'm like, oh, man. I'm one of those, I got to get my money's worth. <laughs> you know how that goes. You need to get your money's worth. So when do you stop eating ribs? When they don't have any more. No, not really. I know that uh, who's the guy that does the sooner cue thing. Does it talk about that? 
Yeah. Okay, so 454 does talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it says short circuit evaluation means that the JVM stops evaluating an expression whenever the expression's alpha outcome becomes certain. Right. Okay. Once it knows, for sure. If the left side of an end to end expression evaluates to false, then the expression's outcome is certain false, and anything evaluates to false. Right. Okay. And then the right side is skipped. Right. Okay. So did, was that 450? 454. 454 talks about it. Okay. All right. Let's continue on now. All right. Let's see what we're supposed to do first. <laughs> okay, we're supposed to modify this code. It says the program on the next slide determines whether fans at a basketball game win free french fries. If the home team wins and scores at least 100 points, then print out the message. Redeem your ticket stub for a free order of french fries at Yummy Burgers. Sweet. <laughs> All right. I know. I got to lose like... 21 pounds in the next 15 days, so I can do it. Wow. 21 pounds in the next 15 days? Oh, yeah. It's not that hard. Because I bet a guy I can beat him. And if I get if I lose 21 pounds, then I get all you can eat ribs. I mean, as long as I beat him, I'm going to get him anyway. But I want to get to, I want to, I've got to lose 21 pounds. Here goes 10 and 20. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You're going to gain. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I actually chart my weight every day for like years almost. I skip some, but man, my weight looks like a heart rate. It's up and down and up and down. See, I know how to gain it and I know how to lose it. I'm quite excessive. Yeah, that's why I, all you can eat rib, not a good thing. All right. Yeah, free fries. Yeah, that would not be good either. All right, let's continue on. I can hear you All right. No, my cholesterol is 154. My heart rate, my blood pressure is like 117 over 72 or something. Last time I checked. That's so. pretty good. Yeah. That's All right. Let's, let's talk about this. So we need to insert some code here that evaluates their points and, you know, see if we get some free fries. That's correct, isn't it? And it says... If the home team wins and scores at least 100 points. All right. So how are we going to make... We've got to make an if statement, obviously. And it's got to have something with an and, because they got to do two things. What, are the, what do they need to do? Uh, if they, they have to win and score. score win and score 100 points. at least 100. All right. So let's replace win with... How, okay, how am I going to check if they win? Anybody? It'd be a true or false statement, uh, one or zero. Uh, so I need to replace the, the variable of win could equal. Uh, well, I don't need to create a variable though. But I mean, okay, I'm going to replace win with what statement can I put in there to see if they won? How do you know if someone wins? Compare the points, see who scored the most. There you go. I mean, we're going to look at the score. Who had the higher score wins? Is that right? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to compare home points. To opponent points. Okay, so what symbol do I put in here? Versus. Oh, um, greater. What if they're equal, though? Do they yeah, win if it's a tie? They tie. They, they're equal. They so if they tie, they, they didn't win. Not a win. All right, so would that work? Yes. So if home points is greater than opponent points. All right, so we got the first part. The second part says they got to score at least 100 points. So if home points is equal to. Equal or greater than 100, then. Right. All right? Sound right? Will it take it like that, or does it have to be reversed? All right, let's see. We'll find out. Pretty sure it will, though. <clears throat> We're going to get that. Get that with... Ah, we're going to try it. See what it does. Oh, it might not take it that way. Whoa. What's wrong up here? Illegal start of expression. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I, like, copied the whole blooming thing in there. I already had a main method, didn't I? I put his whole program inside of my program, and now we got way too many things in here. I think that's better. 
I'm removing his prologue and everything just so we can see it a little better in here. All right, that, that's better. Let me try it. Okay, error code. Does not like it that way. Well, that just sucks. Yes, There you go. It's happy now. All right. Okay, home points. 70? 70. What did the opponent get? 16. Not a darn thing. So we're going to say... Elks. Starve. Starve. <laughs> All right, we're mean. Starve. All right, so that was 70 yeah. and 68. Good game. It was a good game. Starve. It was close. Oh. Not good enough. All right. So now this time the home team got 116. The opponents got 117. Oh. Still starving. All right, so let's give the home team exactly 100 points. And so they were probably paying OU maybe, so OU got four. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. We get some fat free pies. All right. So does it work? Yep. Yeah. Is anyone an OU fan in here? I could really care less. Who's it? Oh, <laughs> he has an OU shirt on. <laughs> Didn't even recognize it. Wow. Uh, uh, I don't watch any sports, so I don't know. Is so, did we meet the criteria here? Yep. The output might be a little bit different, but we and we we checked it. We checked both. All right. All right. Let's continue on. All right. So we insert the code here, which we did. Okay. Now let's talk about or. Okay. Provide code that prints by. Well, actually, you know what? I want to modify my fries here. That's what I want to do. I want you to get free fries if they win. Or if they score 100 points. Okay? Okay. So, if they score 100 points and still lose, you're still getting some free fries now. We're making it easier. So, take out the end statements and put the double lines, I guess? Let's try it. The double lines is above the enter key. It's the shift of the key above the enter key. Also known as a pipe symbol to some people. Well, it's got that space in there. Is that gonna... Right. That's it. That's the key. Oh, that's oh, okay. Okay. All right, let's try that. Okay. So now home point score is, let's try it like we did originally, 70 to 68. So we won. Yeah, we won. So Even though we sucked. Okay, so let's go 68 to 70. Now, we lost and we didn't have 100. Okay, now let's give us a 100. And the other team had 100, so it was a tie. But we had 100 points, so we're good. Now let's make sure if uh, they uh, say we had 100, they had 150. Still got free fries. So is that working? Is it working right? Yeah. All right. What did you hit to put the, the symbols in there again? Shift of the key above the enter key. So shift back. Yeah, shift backslash. That's the pipe symbol. And so those pipe it symbols looks, are equivalent to the or. and or? The or. The or. or. Not and or. It's or. Kind of like a lot of my students who have had me in classes before, they'll send me a, uh, a question in the email. They'd be like, are we having class today or something else? And I say yes. Really, if you give an or statement, the answer is yes. Do you all agree with that? Math, yeah. yeah, it's always yes. <laughs> it drives so many people crazy, and I, I reply back yes, and they're like, fine. <laughs> they ask me one question, then I say whatever. Yeah, it's like, yeah. This is true, though. They, they ask two questions. Yeah, with an or between it. Two questions should get two answers. No. No, it's either one or the other. One or the other, so the answer is yes. If it satisfies either one of those variables, and that's I decide. a true statement. Two questions, get All right. So, yeah, it drives people crazy with that, but it's okay. Like some guy emailed me yesterday with a whole bunch of questions. 
And I pull uh, what's called the Dr. Shinoy. Some of you don't know him, but some of you might. He, he like, he's very short on email. You normally get back yes or no. And he'll read, like, the first sentence. So I, what I do when I get a lot of email, a lot of questions, I'll answer one of them. And like the guy today goes, but you didn't answer me. I'm like, yeah, I did. He goes, well, you said yes. I'm like, yeah, that was the answer to, like, the second question. But what about the rest? I'm like, well, send me another email. One at a time this time. I don't want to sit, because, you know, I'm not going to, no. Sorry. I'm mean like that. All right. Let's continue on. All right. So we met the criteria of 100 points or win. All right, so you all kind of see how we could have got this to work. All right. Let's, uh, actually, I'm going to take that code he's got right there and play with it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take this code right here. Okay. Uh, let's just let's put it over here so we can see what it says. See it nice and clear. All right. Oh, nice. I have no idea why I had question marks there, but, all right. So, could I write that any other way? Well, first of all, what does this say? So, if the response is a lowercase q, or response is an uppercase q, what do you think? Is that good? So, if I'm asking you to quit, and you hit either lowercase or uppercase, it's going to say bye. Well, you can shorten that by taking out the parentheses so after the quotation lowercase q, or the uh, parentheses lowercase q. Do what with it? Uh, just take it out. Take all this out? Um, up until the, we'll leave the or statement in there. There's even an easier way. Equals ignore case. Equals ignore case. We learned about that last chapter. I could take this out and just go equals ignore case. Do the same thing. Okay? So I just wanted you to see that. So it'll, you can use it, you know. But what if I want to check a Q or a D or something? Then I would have to say if response dot equals Q or response dot equals D. But one thing you always want to watch when you're doing programs. Now, for the programs you write for me, not an issue. If you ask me to enter a lowercase q, I'm going to put in a lowercase q. I'm not going to mess with you put it in an uppercase q. But in the real world, you don't know. So you might want to always work for both. Because some people, you know, type in all caps. One of my clients I used to have, their order management system, they, had, they used all caps in the whole entire system. So all their emails... I ever got from them are in all caps because that's the way they work. Everything they do is in all caps. Where other places, people use lowercase. So it could cause issues. So, all right. Let's continue on. All right. Is everybody okay on how the or works? Easy enough? Okay. I like my fry better, fry example better in this one anyway. But, all right. All right. Again, this will not work. Because it's basically, I say, if response is equal to a small q, or, you know, what's equal to a big q? You, know, it's, you can't do, you can't even put it in quotes here and get this to work. You would have to say, you know, actually, yeah, get rid of those quotes. Wait, it just won't work. Okay. All right, another common bug is use the equals operator. You cannot do this. Equals, which they really don't talk about too much on the slides, equals is for primitive data types. What's a primitive data type? Well, like a prim single variable. A single variable, right. So integer. So it's good for int, float, double, long, care. It's only number. Well, it could be a character even. But it cannot use for strings, can't be used for compound data types. So a single entry, I guess, right. Single so even though this here is a single Q, it's in double quotes, so this is a string. All right. So I mean, it'll work, but it's not right. What What if you put the single quote? Oh, then it's perfect. Then it's a character. Okay. It's the way you can think of it is uh, okay. There's no one in this room, but what if I had two students with the name Ken? 
Just because the names can match, does that mean they're the same person? No, it doesn't mean that. And we're going to cover a whole bunch more about that. But with strings, you have to use equals or equals ignore case. The double equals is only for um, primitive data types like int, long, float, double, care, short, byte, other stuff we didn't talk about. But yeah, stuff like that. Okay. Now compile, it just won't work quite right. All right. As an alternative, we should use equals nor case, which we already talked about. That will solve an issue. Okay. Not. I think I want to finish not, and then we're not going to do any more tonight. Okay. Let's see. All right. The not operator. What not does is reverses the truth. Okay. Or falsifies the condition. And as you saw earlier today, it's kind of hard to get that right sometimes. Especially when you have two nots. It's kind of... It's tough. All right. Let's go back here real quick. I'm going to go back to my free fries again. I'm going to get rid of this. I want to modify it so that they have to lose. So if they lose uh, or get less than 100 points, they get free fries. Okay? See what I'm saying? So how could I do that using the not statement? But what if I did this? Tell me if this will work. What if I put not and put all this in quotes? Will that work, you think? That just reverse the, reverse the whole thing? Let's see. Let's try it. So the home point got 100 points, and they got 100 points. Well, say 98. So the home team won. Start. It's just working. I got over 100. Didn't get no fries. So now let's test if they lose. So they lost. Okay, so it was good. So did that, did that solve the problem? I think there's one more thing you could try is if they... Oh, if they had 100. If they win. And, but they had 150. They still lost, got 100. So since they had 100, they don't get any fries. Basically, I'm saying if you did too good, starve. Okay? So you can use it to negate it. So it's inversing the entire string. Right. So, yeah, exactly. It took this whole thing and turned it around. I could have, you know, put not equals to whatever. And by the way, while we're talking about this, let me get rid of this for a second. I don't really ever program using that. I just have an issue with it because I never know if it's the way to put it in there. I just, the way I always do it, as I would have said, see what I'm saying? Rather than greater than or equal to 100, I always make it to greater than 99. Is that the same thing? It is the same thing, but that way I don't have to remember how to put it in the greater than or equals. So. Depends on what kind of variable you're working with. Right, if it's an integer, you're okay. Yeah. If it's a double, then we got an issue because it could be 99.1. So, but yeah, I usually try to figure out another way to do it just because I do. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's, it's the way I do it. So, all right, but not negates it. Okay. So, what will this do? Okay. So, to print, let's get started. If a response variable does not contain a letter lowercase or uppercase Q, do this. So what we did is we put the not in front of it. So what happens is we always evaluate inside the parentheses first. So say I enter a Q, a lowercase Q. Obviously this is going to be true. Do you agree? This part right here. If I put a lowercase Q, this will be true. This part will be false because I put a lowercase Q. But since I have an or, we have a true or a false, so the inside is true. The not negates that makes it true into a false. See that? It reverses it. It's, it's tricky to work with. You really have to watch it. Because it's just... Uh, a lot of times you just got to write it out or really think about it closely because it does the opposite. All right. All right. 
we're going to pick up on the switch statement next time. It's, uh, it's going to take a little bit to cover that one. But uh, we're almost halfway done with these slides. So, All right, so we're going to stop on 17. We'll pick up on 18.